You are all very welcome to Uruguay. With us, we have experts on climate from more than 30 countries. More than 170 have been listed. So you are all very welcome to this event on climate services. It's the fourth international conference of this three-day event with an information system for decision-making as main focus of activities with approaches on health, water, disaster, pasture management, climate system assessment, among other things, because you have, well, the program with all the activities at group level also. This conference has three main goals based on the partnership for uh, climate services created in 2001, that is to bring the community to discuss a state of the art of knowledge on climate services. And in this regard, we will have discussions. This is a fourth conference meeting. We have had three in New York, Brussels, and in Montego Bay, and the fourth here in Montevideo, with a very seminal group working during long time together with the Ministry of Agriculture as a focal point, but also uh, to create an agenda together with ENOMET, the National Meteorology Institute, and the National uh, System for Responding to Climate Change, among other agencies, together with ERI, that is also part of this organization. So, with this act, and in summary, and apologizing for the health uh, director who is going to come and cannot attend, she won't be present in the opening session. Mrs. Siganda will arrive later. She's uh, the representative of the public health uh, sector for the response for climate change. But we will now hand the floor to the president of Inumet engineer, Gabriel Pisciotano. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Uruguay on behalf of the organizers and of all the Uruguayan people. Let us hope that you feel at home with us. I think this is a very hospitable country. This is what our migrant grandparents taught us. They were very well received in our land, and we are very grateful to all that and take care of our guests. Uruguay is a small country, open to the world. I believe that the Minister Aguirre wants it to be even more open to the world because in the world we have opportunities for Uruguayans and when foreigners come to our land, we understand they are a contribution to the construction of our country and society. So welcome to working in this conference, to enjoying everything we believe the city can offer to you and, if possible, the country itself. I first wish to share a few words with you regarding the role I believe the National Meteorology Institute ought to have, the Uruguayan Meteorology Institute, that's its formal name, in this sort of environment. The Uruguayan Meteorology Institute, the INUMET, is an agency which, as the different climate uh, services have, have a daily task that is very routine. We mentioned this at dinner yesterday together with Antonio Divino Moura. This work must persist during long years and societies should organize themselves to maintain this and respect the work of the officers in the institutes that routinely maintain observations during many, many, many decades. In Omet, the Uruguayan Meteorology Institute was formally created in 2013. Here we have some ministers that witnessed the legal aspects and it was recreated as a decentralized 
agency with a certain organizational and executive autonomy. Well, this wasn't born, born only that day. It has a history of 119 years of observations, and many of the researchers present here in the room from the physical sciences and from the social sciences and its different mixtures uh, that work on the impact of climate on social and economic and agriculture issues can study this because this society was organized to maintain all these measurements. Of course, it doesn't make sense if it isn't integrated to an institutional in international system where these observations can be done in an orderly manner, systematically, under a standard that allows comparisons and exchange, where we can study both physical problems and those that are applied and have an impact on societies. This great work during many long decades is often at risk due to very simple things such as a uh, computer breaking down or if the electricity isn't okay. These are the everyday problems that those directing these uh, climate services suffer in a dramatic way. But not everybody is familiar with this. I say this because I come from the academia and for uh, some time, although I was closely related to the climate services at local and international level, wasn't totally aware of the relevance of the everyday grey and routine task that is done uh, every day and not every four years, such as conferences, uh, sometimes with continuous registries of some variables, so they are available. Societies sometimes, and I say it with due respect, I have two ministers present uh, from whom I have received great support and I'm very grateful to them. And I hope that in the future, whoever continues with the task will provide as much uh, support as they. But our societies sometimes are not aware of uh, the responsibility of the small scale of these issues that require uh, minimal uh, monies for the working of the meteorological services. And I say this because if you are all aware of this, the climate services will be demanded to be responsible for the monitoring and observational recording tasks to make the data available and also some of the operational forecasts receive support for the everyday work so that this is feasible. It's not a major effort that society must make, but it must be sustained and appropriate and integrated at international level. And this is extremely important. I say this during the opening session because I think that without this, none of the studies we will enjoy in this uh, conference will be uh, put forward. Well, it's something very simple but essential. So nothing will work if this doesn't occur. And it's they is sometimes underestimate its importance. I will not bore you with the relevance of uh, the weather and climate. Uh, different societies and civilizations have developed and clearly each civilization uh, is under the ages of its climate. Uh, the, the, the cereals in Mesopotamia, uh, maize growing in the Andes, because the climate allows it, and civilizations cannot arise in any place. The weather is so determinant that the history of societies could be written as a function of the climate. I think this hasn't been done, but it could be so. 
in our country. Naturally, and the ministry, uh, ministers of agriculture and housing are present. Well, they know about the relevance of uh, climate and the weather in our everyday life, in the problems and solutions found by our societies according to the climate conditions. He's a minister of agriculture, and that isn't by chance. Uh, that we have more cows and people here, but that doesn't occur throughout. There are very few countries in the world, I don't know, he may know where this is so. However, the homes, and we have the housing minister here, well, he's a minister of housing, uh, territorial ordering and environment. I like to call him the Ministry of Environment because the Institute of uh, Meteorological Services reports back to uh, his ministry due to the environmental issues. This ministry uh, works in many areas. And I brought this very beautiful Argentine book on uh, the oven bird. I don't know if you're familiar with the oven bird, but uh, the people in the region know him. This bird shares its habitat in the south of Brazil. I think they call him Chau do Barro in the south of Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, and I believe that part of Paraguay. And this bird integrates issues regarding with the climate availability of uh, mud to build its nest. His nest is very peculiar, and here we have the housing minister looking at us. The oven bird's habitat is a lovely mud house that any architect would love. This chapter has been written by an architect. When I was a child in my town, people thought that if we looked at the place where the oven bird built its nest, we would predict if the season would be damper or drier according to the distance from the river close by. I never researched this. I don't have the figures. We don't have a registry in detail to allow me uh, to do this. And of course, we don't have registries of the oven bird's nest. But people continue to believe it, and I think this must be so. If you want, I can lend you the book and you will learn a lot about the region and birds and about the climate and many things these four countries that also share the weather sh share. And last night with Divina Mora, we were uh, having a conversation together with other colleagues from the climate services in the region, uh, showing how observation that's a primary task of meteorological services in a country such as Uruguay, well, it doesn't make sense to consider it in isolation, both the climate and the meteorological networks uh, should be organized in partnership. In the region in the east of the Andes, well, we don't have an abrupt uh, climate uh, border as occurs between Chile and Argentina. The Andes are a physical border. Uh, other things bring us closer to the Chilean brothers, but not the climate. Uh, circulation to the west, yes. The uh, weather in Argentina and Chile is different, but the Uruguay River and the terrestrial borders with Brazil don't make a difference. It's a single physical object, and the uh, meteorological networks and the human efforts to respond to this must also be integrated. I thank the people who made an effort to organize this here. And fortunately, INOMET is in an institutional change, undergoing many legal and budget and organizational transformations and has many institutional weaknesses. So it couldn't really contribute much in the specific organization of the conference. But I want you to know that all the data and any contributions that Inomet makes to society will uh, remain in time as 
we had meteorological observations during 119 days, years. And this doesn't depend on the people present here, but, but on a sustained effort of the Uruguayan society integrated to international system will continue doing. Thank you. Thank you, Engineer Pisciotano. Dr. Sigando, the Director of the Ministry of Public Health, has arrived, so we invite her to come forward. So we can take a picture. Well, we now hand the floor to the Minister of Housing, Territorial Land Ordering and Environment, Architect Francisco Beltrame. Good morning, everybody, distinguished visitors from the different states. Be welcome to our country. We hope that this meeting is successful and fruitful in agreement with your expectations and that you can also enjoy our country. Fellow citizens, colleagues in the panel, friends all, it's a pleasure to open this meeting on behalf of the national uh, system to respond to climate change and variability that is chaired by our ministry together with the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry and the Planning Ministry. We are very grateful for uh, the Ministry of Agriculture and the InnoMed for hosting this fourth ICCS designed to approach specifically climate services in relation to planning, management, and decision-making in the main development sectors all represented in our national response system. It is likewise of interest that the conference will seek to identify, integrate, and propose institutional issues regarding relationships between science and decision-making. These matters emerge from the crucial importance for the development of our institutions. Several of them are being currently uh, reformulated and strengthened, and their competencies are related to matters related to the climate, such as tourism, agricultural production, energy generation, human health, and the vitality of ecosystems. Joint work among the three uh, institutions organizing the conference, together with the international relationships, allowed us to prepare a very rich agenda that will allow us to exchange the best experiences, both at international and national level, in the area of climate services. Although climate services is a new term at local level, the Uruguayan experiences integrated in this concept are very broad, and several of them show the uh, great consolidation in several sectors such as energy, health, agriculture, water resources, and disaster risk management. As regards specific experiences in Uruguay, I would like to highlight a few of which will be uh, presented by our colleagues. Modeling and prediction of the climate for the energy sector focused specifically on the current development of renewable energies where our country is undoubtedly a world leader. Part of the renewable energy sources are highly dependent on climate conditions and the intelligent use of climate information will allow the optimization of the whole sector lowering costs and risks. Second, I would like to mention the early warning system for floods, initially developed for the city of Durano, but that is now being extended to other cities with a high uh, flood risk. This system has proven to be effective to improve prevention and rapid response to evacuate people at imminent risk using climate and hydrological reliable information. 
with time enough for appropriate decision making last and thinking more on the long term risk reduction everything being developed by the ministry in relation with a flood risk mapping, including hydrological information with a climate base, but in turn strongly relating this with the land ordering processes and relocation of housing in uh, floodable lands. All this risk reduction policy led by our ministry focused first to improve the quality of life of the more vulnerable families at climate and social level, also uh, requires as one of the inputs better and more uh, climate information. As mentioned, this conference will include institutional arrangements that will allow more fluent uh, information for decision making. I would like to highlight the active existence of the National uh, System for Response to Climate Change and Variability, an institutional model that several countries in the region are adopting vis-a-vis the cross-sectional reality that is related to policies in relation to climate change and variability that knows no borders. The system is a system that is constantly being developed and strengthened and it uh, celebrated its fifth anniversary in March. In this framework we have all the national decision-making agencies related to the development of environmental management related to climate change and variability. Thus, departmental governments via the uh, Congress of City Authorities. But the system doesn't end there. Its mission includes the advisory commission, the presence of the University of the Republic and of the main national research and technology institutes related to climate and uh, sectors affected by it. In this sense, the system becomes a powerful tool to develop multiple relationships allowing better flow of information for better decision making. An example is a recent work carried out by the uh, group of indicators in the system preparing a structured indicator system allowing to synthesize the main climate uh, data for decision making in the long term in the country. Likewise, in this national system, we have the active participation of the current INUMET, the Uruguay Meteorology Institute. And I want to mention this new agency in closing to remember the actions of the current administration to create a decentralized agency related to our ministry, allowing a qualitative rise in the institutional and operational conditions of our climate services, improving the quality of climate information and thus allowing all Uruguayans in, in institutions to reach a better decision in relation to the climate. Last, I now welcome you again, particularly the visitors from abroad. We wish you the best success this week. Minister Beltrame, thank you very much. Next, and to close this opening session and pass on directly to the next presentation by the Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fishery, who has just arrived from Peru a few hours ago. Well, we will hand him now the floor. Uh, to make a speech. Good morning, everybody. Well, the other colleagues have already been greeted by the rest of the panelists. I will not repeat the greetings and the best wishes for a good stay and a fruitful work. My goal in this presentation is to give you a sh an introduction of 
the reality in Uruguay trying to account or respond to the question that most of you who are related to the scientific or academic area in relation to the climate may ask, that is, what, why is it so important for the Ministry of Agriculture in the framework of the National System for Response to Climate Change uh, respond in relation to this? Well, people just said that I uh, came from Lima, from COP20, and thousands of people during uh, many conferences discuss the issue of climate change according to two main key areas, mitigation and adaptation. And I would like to just quote a sentence that highlights the importance of this activity for productive and social and economic development in a country, and that is related to the importance of our capability to generate adaptation vis-a-vis -vis climate variability, which is already with us, and the increased variability and the higher frequency of extreme events forecast due to the effects of climate change. And second, our rationale is that we shouldn't waste a minute further trying to imagine what the weather will be like in the coming 80 years, but rather make the best efforts to improve our adaptation capabilities to uh, climate variability today. And in this way, we will improve our capacity to adapt to the climate change of the future. Uruguay is a country with 17 million hectares, 3,300,000 inhabitants and 12 million cows. 75, 77% of our uh, surface area is occupied by natural pastures. We are part of a region that is known as the river plate bioma, nearly 600,000 square kilometers with the, the persistence of one of the natural pasture areas that is more extensive and productive of the whole world. We are a country where the rural population accounts for close to 50,000 uh, rural producers and people who live in the rural uh, milieu. Agricultural activity occupies directly and indirectly through the uh, industrial chains and services. 80% of the economically active population in the country and of these growers, 63% are family uh, farmers, medium-sized, small-sized, in productive services where vulnerability vis-a-vis -vis the weather is often linked to scale. The main threat is increased variability. These two images show one same farm in two different years, 2009 and 2010. This increases uncertainty. To give you just one piece of information, the last drought Uruguay had in 2008 was a loss of 25% of livestock production. Ultimately, we refer to drought, but reports speak of an increase in the medium and long term of rainfall. Rainfall increases, but the trend apparently says this is the case, although we also have an increased average. Well, this has been explained by the uh, higher frequency of extreme events. 
reflected in the figure with very critical periods. And why is this important for Uruguay? Because 25% of the wealth generated in Uruguay or the GDP is directly or indirectly determined by agricultural or agro-industrial activities and uh, linked services. In the past 10 years, Uruguay has uh, multiplied four times the value of its uh, goods exports and agricultural products still or agro-industrial products still account for 78% of exports in the country. So for this country, what occurs at agricultural level is determinant. And the climate is determinant for agricultural activity. And I could add that Uruguay has also developed logistical services and very good tourist services that are also impacted by climate variability. And of course, housing and health. I said we are a country with 3 million inhabitants. In 2005, we produced foods for 9 million inhabitants, and now we do so for 28 million of inhabitants. And somehow, a challenge we must meet is based on the productive potential of our resources and then how to produce for 50 million inhabitants. In all these conferences, such as the one I participated in yesterday and the day before, there is a common uh, line uh, that is a relationship of food security with agriculture, agriculture with climate change, and the three things with rural development. If in Uruguay we have a chance to grow towards a world increasingly demanding food, and we wish to do so in a sustained manner in the long term, we ought to intelligently approach climate information and include uh, information services in decision making for public policies and investment decisions. And that is the reason why we assign this activity and the one developed by each of you a strategic importance in this vision of a constru constructing national development. What we call the agro intelligence Uruguay is based on five pillars promotion of competitiveness and international insertion because it is clear that we can only grow at quantitative level but also qualitatively if we grow towards the exterior. This uh, process of greater production of foodstuffs must respect the concept of sustainable intensification because it would make sense to grow and we wouldn't be able to be transform this into a development if uh, it signified a deterioration of our natural, natural resources or if it didn't take into account this vision, identifying productive systems, respecting concepts of resilience. Third, adaptation to climate change. That is, we ought to necessarily focus prospectively and Information management is included here together with the generation of knowledge, a product of research transfer so that research becomes innovation with higher quality products in sustainable uh, systems, but uh, resilient at resource level with adaptational capability in relation to climate events. The fourth pillar is that everything serve uh, the process of rural development, allowing and conceptualizing all these aspects according to a rationale where thousands of small and medium-sized farmers manage to become inserted competitively in the value chains in order to participate in these growth opportunities. And all this may only be possible with a very strong relationships and interdisciplinary work at institutional level, uh, in, at state level, national and international, and at private level. According to this view, 
the soil policy is a key. I told you that Uruguay maintains 70% of its land surface as natural pastures. I must add that in the past 10 years, there has been a threefold or fourfold increase of its agricultural surface area. We have passed from conventional tillage to a model of uh, zero till, and we have learned that the advantages of the zero tillage system for conservation of carbon in the soil and reduction of erosion isn't enough to guarantee system sustainability and therefore we have developed one of the main public policies carried out at agricultural level in the history of the country and that uh, is after developing a very high quality information as a soil mapping developed as a public good and the application of a mathematical model that's a universal uh, equation for soil loss incorporating 40 years of national research we have encouraged this uh, public policy regulating soil use as a function of its capability and tolerance to erosion the next stage well because it wouldn't make sense to have encouraged this development without prior uh, ordering of land use is intensification of water use uh, limiting factors for most crops in Uruguay incorporating intelligently great an important part of the water we currently don't use to productive processes and third the intelligent management of our biodiversity wealth in terms of natural pastures Uruguay is a country with a basis of uh, natural pastures for uh, livestock and with this comparative advantage we have identified comparative advantages at genetic and nutritional health level but uh, also developing and incorporating IT and communications to serve certification processes both at century level and in relation to quality of products each of our 12 million cows has an ear tag an electronic ear tag with geo-referenced uh, identification allowing us to know in which part of the country they are and this information will be useful to develop a broader or holistic view of uh, geographic information systems. Uruguay is a, a tree growing country now with an important part of its land area devoted to forestry, but it has preserved the uh, surface of forests. There's a forest law protecting the native forest transforming Uruguay in the single country in Latin America that has increased it, this area of native forest. After this introduction, we ought to discuss the goals of the present conference that is discussing climate services under the ages of information systems. Uruguay is building in the strategic axis for adaptation to climate change an information platform known as National Agriculture and Information System that is a powerful geo-referenced information system including different factors for production of different soils and waterways but also including the history of production regarding the different uh, farms and land and soil use programs, agrochemicals surveys in relation to production and including in a proactive manner climate information not only forecasts but also records so in this way we can facilitate the integration of information related to natural resources together with that related to climate issues ultimately we are developing a platform in collaboration with the Institute of Climate and Society at Columbia University 
with participation and funding from the World Bank in a system tailored for Uruguayan conditions with the goal of responding to the potential emerging demands from the environment, the climate and the development project at agricultural level in the country as described in the first eight minutes of my presentation. This system as established in the slide has many goals that vary from the information support for decision making and the construction of public policies until uh, IT platform uh, to serve the public sector. We allocate a great importance to the information to be used by the public uh, sector for decision making at public level, but also uh, public good that will be made available to the private sector. An example, one of the strategic elements in our uh, policy to adapt to climate variability has to do with insurances. Uruguay has developed uh, insurance according to climate index. We have the first insurance for water excess in agriculture and we are developing a second one for droughts in livestock. The problem with insurances is that the greater the uncertainty, the more the cost. Counting with information reduces uncertainty and this lowers insurances and thus we have a tool available requiring less state support so that growers and entrepreneurs may transfer part of the climate risk to uh, the insurance product. We have based our main activity that is livestock and the whole information system on the identification, uh, individual identification of animals. Our main resources related to the soil are geo-referenced and are one of the information layers, the land use and management plans developed by farmers to carry out their agricultural plans are uh, including another layer, the information developed using the cartography and description of profiles and storage capacity of soils is integrated with the uh, rainfall registries and this allows us to every day know the balance and thus include this as a further layer. Well, all this platform is useful for public policies and for farmer uh, decision making and provides all these services listed. We currently know where we ha are at risk vis-a-vis -vis an eventual drought. Hopefully we won't have it, but as a function of the combination of the animal burden per hectare with the water storage capability of the soils, if we know that we will have a drought in the coming three months. We have this risk map that will allow us to reach decisions at emergency level in a more accurate manner. A statement of emergency planning development, then better insurance early warnings. Which are the challenges? As I said at first, promoting development via the sustained or sustainable intensification, adapt to climate change and risk management to manage information in real time. Incorporating all these concepts into the construction of a differential quality. The world of 9 billion people in 2050 will demand 50% more foodstuffs as compared to what is produced today. Uh, food security is one of the millennium goals and ought to be included together with other goals related to agricultural aspects such as 
climate change or emissions. All this must naturally be included in relation with the compliance of this uh, goal, with this goal. This doesn't mean that agriculture doesn't have a possibility of uh, reducing emissions in relative terms. I mentioned this in Lima. The world cannot consider that agriculture will reduce its emissions in absolute terms. Uruguay and the world must develop agriculture in such a way and Uruguay has this approach according to which we must work intensely to incorporate science and technology in order to have more efficient productive processes that reduce emission uh, per uh, farm unit. Some quality attributes uh, are related to the more demanding uh, consumers. So we want a tender, a juicy and a tasty meat, but also non-organoleptic aspects that form uh, part of the quality parameters such as environmental certification, employment conditions, working conditions, the care of a natural resources, emission level per unit of product. This is an Australian family and what we have there is what they consume in a week. And the challenge Uruguay faces understood as a country that could specialize in the provision of very high quality foodstuffs is identify what of this basket can be offered by Uruguay in a competitive manner in the short term but in a sustainable way in the long term. We are sure that the inclusion of climate services within this process, the intelligent use of climate services in this development strategy will generate this possibility insofar as we generate databases that are interoperative. I repeat, the virtue is in being able to cross information and use it interactively. We must generate knowledge uh, through research and analyze the information, but this knowledge should be duly translated to useful information for those uh, taking the decisions. Here we have a list with the different examples and goals for the next years in our national agricultural information system. Uruguay is a country, well, not only Uruguay, in our system and the world, we must follow this path in a comprehensive uh, way based on five components, the generation of knowledge, research, development and innovation, the transformation of all this into information, development of private and public infrastructure incorporating all these aspects, the consideration in the uh, services and ecosystems are incorporated in the production systems, institutional development of which Inumet or the national system to respond to climate change are examples of a horizontal cross-sectional institutionality contemplating the different approaches of these issues. And in the end, international cooperation and, of course, we cannot speak of climate services without mentioning the challenges related to climate change, we think that we should also take into account international cooperation within the framework of the International Convention for Climate Change. But in order to be pragmatic and not just speak empty words, incorporating the uh, concept of implementation measures. These images correspond to a country with cows, it, that it 
is the main wealth. We are a livestock country and have been so before even being a country. But in the past years, we have incorporated a very intelligent dimension of the balance of our energy matrix with renewable sources. And we're quite sure that our main wealth is a number of light hours and uh, radiant energy on our pastures. And nine out of every 10 years, the minimum law we studied at agronomy school occurs through the limiting factor, and that is water. So the inclusion of sustainable energy with the water we are not well using today would allow us to intensify production processes, energy, water, soils, and biodiversity at the service of the construction of national construction with a social inclusion require the invaluable contribution, in our view, of everything regarding climate services. That, that is the importance we assign to this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Aguirre, Minister Beltrame, President Pistetano, Director Siganda. In this way, we end this first session, starting this fourth conference. Thank you all.